Hi, folks. This is Garrett with LLM Ops, and uh, I'm going to present Deep Writer. Now, we know that this is a big problem facing society. A lot of people are worried that AI can and will replace them. But I think I have some good news. <clears throat> and that I, that good news is that AI can be a tool that enhances the productivity and creativity of content creators, at least those who embrace it. The even better news is if you really break down how long does it take to write something like a novel or an episode of Seinfeld collectively, if you add up all the time of all the people who put input into a show like that. Now, what if we could cut that time down by 90% and you're still getting paid the same amount? Now, how is this possible? We know that if we ask something like uh, the best LMs of the day right now, which are chat GPT uh, four, um, we know that we may get something good quality, but it may be very short. For example, I asked it to write an episode of Seinfeld for me, and it returned about 350 words. It was more of a synopsis with some examples of dialogue. So how is Deep Writer plus the best LMs of the day better than those LMs by themselves? How is Deep Writer able to scale the output of a GPT four turbo or or five or whatever model is out at this time by a hundred X two magnitudes longer than even the best LMs could ever do. And with better quality content, <clears throat> the answer is through an agentic approach. That is we're using agents, swarms of agents that are each as intelligent as the best LM of the day. Also using scaling strategies, using things like RAG, chunking, and all the tools available for LLM ops, the growing world. Amazing tools. For example, it's built extensively on LangChain. And of course, there's the secret sauce. We're talking about prompt engineering, fine tuning, and LLM empowered coding. Now, what do I mean by LLM powered coding? It's a new style of, of application development that uh, you can do things for the first time that you never could do before. You could ask sort of qualitative questions and get answers in your code that executes other code. Uh, here's an actual piece of Python code that you could run using LLMs. You could feed it a work of, of uh, some kind of work, a work of fiction, for example, and say, ask the LLM, is this uh, an existing IP or is this original? And then, of course, you could see here types of things you could do with it. Another example here is uh, the type of thing that you find in applications like DeepWriter. If you can improve the work, maybe through an iterative process, uh, and if not, and then you can create an, an, uh, a reviewer team of agents and those reviewers can actually review it and they can do a good job reviewing the work. And if they're not happy, send it back and prove it. There could be another team that's task is to improve things. And then of course, if that doesn't work out well, there's always other approaches. There is however, some not so great news. The, uh, the trend I think inevitably is that Use, uh, the user is going to be able to create whatever content they want with such ease that we may change the way that we consume media. We may not rely on a, a centralized writer or producer of content. We might just, people might just want to create their own. For example, uh, I've always thought, what if there were other seasons of Seinfeld? So let's do a quick demo of uh, Deep Writer and try to make some new episodes of Seinfeld. So let's ask Deep Writer. Let's grab this uh, 
to write an episode of Seinfeld where Kramer loses his entire life savings on NFTs. Include some big Seinfeldian twists. Now, of course, running this will take uh, a few minutes. So I want to show you types of responses that you may get. Here we have some JSON representing a very complex data object of that uh, show. And of course, from there, we're able to generate things like teams. We're able to generate a writing team and, of course, the review team. They all have their own specialty. Again, this is the types of things you can do with an LLM that you could never do before. Now, let's look at the what the uh, output of if we were to just go to chat GPT or Turbo and ask the exact same query, you get a response sort of like this. And it's it's got some funny parts, but what if you wanted a full episode? This is what you get from Deep Writer. Let's go to the output from Deep Writer. So we have here first the actual Seinfeld episode. And it is about 10 times longer than the one from Chat GPT 4. But most importantly, because the other one, the GPT 4 one's about 350 words, this is over 3,000. Sometimes I'll get stuff that's 4,000. It really depends on the stage direction. If you ask this for a novel, you're obviously going to get a much bigger output. The quality is actually better than Chat GPT 4 Turbo because of the many, many things that I'm doing to enhance the data and to improve the output. Also, you'll notice that this completely flows very, very loosely. The architecture does a deep dive on the, the query, develops the idea further, creates a team, team of writers, team of reviewers. It then has the lead writer define their vision. All of this is included in this document. After the script, you can actually see the, the team meeting, creative leads vision. They're going to give a high level idea, motifs. They're going to get into all sorts of uh, big picture vision ideas, but they're not going to get into the details. That's the job of the creative team meeting that goes around the room. It includes the creative lead and uh, people are actually reacting to what other agents are saying. It's like having conversations with GPT 4.5 that has been told to be the best writers for this particular task. What's especially magical about this is that I, as the programmer, never said have a certain number of writers of a certain type. I'm asking the LM, how complicated is this job? Bigger teams for more complicated jobs. And then who would be the best people to be on these teams? I never even have to know. Then they get to work. They start to, they create a draft outline. They create a number of documents that become the vector databases of RAG systems. For example, if we look down here, we'll see an, a location list. Jerry's apartment. Now look at the detail that we can get just about Jerry's apartment. The quintessential hub of Seinfeld. Jerry's apartment is the primary setting where many of the plot lines unfold or intersect. The, it's a modest, comfortable one bedroom on the Upper West Side. Blah, blah. You get the idea. We could do the same for the characters. And of course, we could do things like after you've produced the episode, let's develop a marketing plan. Here's the marketing report. And as you can see, this has everything you'd need in a marketing plan. We can build this out as complicated as we need it to be. This is just a simple marketing plan. And here, of course, at the end, there's an, even an action plan. All of these documents, pretty much anything that can be thought of for a write that would be useful for a writing project could easily be added to this, uh, to Deep Writer. Now, where is this all going? What are some future additional features and use cases. Well, there's tons of optimization that can be applied. For and the, uh, certain tasks may require additional agent swarms for fact checking, for checking the scientific veracity of very complicated topics that need extra layers and extra iterations. Sophisticated, of course, the sky is really the limit with a project like this. We could add voice narration, image, video, music generation. And that's these are just the low-hanging fruit. 
There's so much more that we will be developing in the future. But ultimately, the proof is in the product itself. Is this episode of Seinfeld funny? Well, as always, Kramer bursts in the door, filled with enthusiasm about his new NFT. Uh, Jerry, ever the skeptic, shoots it down immediately. Kramer, ignoring the sarcasm. No, no, no. It's way beyond that. You're looking at the owner of the infinite bagel, Jerry. It's an endless loop of swirling dough. A gift, Jerry. A gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> Jerry, dry. Wow, an infinite bagel. That's great, Kramer. As long as you don't plan on eating it for breakfast. I'll tell you, I mean, it's it's good material. I would like to see this episode. But the important thing is that as the episode progresses, it stays cohesive. Things that are set up on page one come to their fruition in the very end. Even though that's many ChatGPT API calls from one to the other. There's lots of tricks to keep the cohesiveness. There's uh, just uh, tremendous amounts of new algorithms that are being developed in real time for projects like this. And it's only possible because of amazing tools out there, amazing like Langchain, amazing LLMs out there like OpenAI's GP, Chat, GPT-4 Turbo and future iterations. And of course, if it wasn't for the AI Makerspace course, I wouldn't know how to do this. I went from someone with a, a very good programming and architectural academic background without the tools to make AI applications. And in just taking three weeks, the LLM Ops course, I was able to develop applications like this in no time. And uh, the things that I can add now to this are really the sky really is the limit. And, and so much of that is thanks to the AI makerspace material. It is, it is rigorous, it is in depth, and it moves really fast. Hope you enjoyed it.